The Deepcool CK500 is a new case that hit the market. It's a middle tower which has support for both mini ITX and extended ATX motherboards, while keeping the RGB trend on a down low. I mean, it has none. The CK500 is available in two variants, an all black or a black and white model, both available at the same price, which is around 78 US dollars or euros. However, with such a price tag and no RGB at all, can this case stand out within the current lineup from the top manufacturers? The Deepcool CK500 is a mid-tower case and in this review we have the all-black variant of the two available. In terms of the design, the CK500 is a good-looking case and something that nowadays can be considered different as it's not jammed packed full of RGB and angular shapes everywhere. The front of the case has an included metal made plate that serves as its front panel. Fortunately, this panel can be easily removed or installed as it's only held in place by magnets. More on this panel later into the review. In terms of features, the CK500 is rather good, with features that are often reserved to the high-end segment of the market. We start with the fans, and this case has two of them pre-installed, one at the front and one at the back, both 140mm in size and both using 3 pin connectors for power, which means that unfortunately you can't control them through your motherboard. For fan support, the CK500 can accommodate up to three 120 or two 140 mm fans at the front and up to two 120 or two 140 fans at the top. The rear is already installed and it is a 140 mm model. No fan slots on the floor, unfortunately. When we talk about dust and dust filtration, the CK500 has a total of three dust filters. The top mounted filter is flexible and attached to the case by a magnetic strip. The front of the case is covered by a plastic dust filter which is attached to the chassis with a small clip. And the last dust filter is the power supply filter which is located at the rear. This one is only accessible from the rear of the case and slides out of its slots. And now, given that we are at the bottom of the case, we can talk about the feet. They are nice enough for a case of this price range. Not made from metal though, it's just plastic. The feet have a thick rubber pad on their inferior side which will provide enough grip for the case and prevent any scratching from occurring on your desk. The main side panel is made from tempered glass and has a black edge that will blend nicely with the rest of the case. Fortunately, unlike other cases, the CK500 has a decent mounting system for this glass panel. First, the side panel is secured to the case with two captive thumb screws. Once those are loosened, the glass panel sits on its two plastic clips that lock into the chassis of the case. The chances of you breaking this side panel by accident are low. However, it's glass, so the chances might be low, but they are never zero. The opposite side panel that covers the wire management and the access to the storage slots of the case is simple. This one is mounted to the case with the help of two captive turn screws and a basic sliding system that has been around for a few hundred years. You just loosen the screws and slide it out the back of the case and that's it. The IO panel of the CK500 is installed at the top of the case, right on the front edge, and it includes plenty. We have a power button, a reset button, one USB Type-C port and two USB 3.0 ports. You also get a combined audio port. The front panel is made from metal and it is detachable, being held in place by just magnets. However, there is a drawback to this panel, because as soon as you install it on the case, the airflow inside will be reduced as there is not enough space between the case and the front panel for adequate airflow. With both panels removed, it's easy to see why the CK500 is a good case for a beginner. It has plenty of space inside and a power supply cover that will cover, no pun intended, all the mess that is the cable management. As I've said previously, this case has a single 140mm fan pre-installed at the back and seven expansion slots which have their covers removable and held in place by screws. Because there are still cases today that use cheap expansion slots covers that you need to break off. The wire management spaces are covered by high quality rubber grommets. However, while these do look and work great, they are a bit on the stiff side, at least on the first try. At the bottom of the motherboard tray, there are two large spaces cut into the power supply cover. These are great for routing the smaller cables of the front IO panel and the RGB accessories. One good thing to see, especially nowadays, it's a pre-installed graphics card holder. This one is installed at the front of the case and it's solid. I have no doubts that this one will hold even the thickest of the graphics cards, even though the chances of you getting one are slim to none. 
The power supply is installed from the side and sits on thick rubber pads that should provide ample dampening and insulation. And that's pretty much it for the power supply department. At the front of the power supply we have the removable hard drive cage. This one is installed on the case with just one thumb screw. It can accommodate either two hard drives or two SATA based SSDs. However, it's made from plastic and has no rubber pads at all. Thus, the vibrations of the HDD will be felt inside the case. The other storage options for the ZK500 are these two SSD holders, and these are unique in their design as they are not really a metal tray, instead you have these rubber grommets that will grip on these metal pins. The pins install on the underside of the SSD and the whole thing just sort of inserts into the grommets. While the front of the case is good looking, the rear of the motherboard tray is even better. There are plenty of tie down points for cable management, a thing which a lot of manufacturers seem to forget lately because the power supply needs no cables in this modern age of computing. Anyway, the CK500 has that covered. Speaking of the wire management, there is over 2 cm of space behind the motherboard tray, 23mm in fact, which is not the best in the world but it's enough to comfortably wire management at the back. In terms of accessories, you only get the bare minimum to work with and that's it. You get a user manual, 11 plastic zip ties, a motherboard standoff tool, 4 extra motherboard standoffs and the usual screws included with the case. You also get 8 pins to install the 2 SATA SSDs at the back of the motherboard tray. And that's it. The installation of the system inside the case couldn't be easier as you have a lot of space to work with. Even with an ATX motherboard and a full length graphics card installed, there is still room inside the CK500 for a reader or two, especially at the front. The system used for case testing has an Intel i5-4690K which is running at 4.3GHz on all cores. The used graphics card is an ASUS GTX 780 Direct CU2. All testing is done with the fans running at their maximum rated speeds. The maximum CPU temperature reached with the CK500 is 71 degrees Celsius, with the CPU overclocked to 4.3GHz and running at the factory Intel CPU cooler. This temperature is due to the front metal panel, which restricts the airflow going inside the case. With the front panel removed, the temperature dropped by 4 degrees. With just two 140mm fans that spin at a maximum of 1000 rpm each, the CK500 cannot be compared with the high-end cases used in this graph, however it still performs good enough for its price range. That is, if you remove the front panel. With the panel installed, the temperature will be higher as the fans are not getting enough air into the system. When we talk about the graphics card, things are different but follow the same pattern. The GTX 780 is running at its factory frequency and voltage, and inside the CK500 it's reached a maximum temperature of 81 degrees Celsius. And with the front panel removed, the temperature is dropped again by around 4 degrees Celsius. In terms of noise output, with only two 140mm fans, the Deepcool CK500 should be silent, and it is for the most part, with a maximum noise output of 30 decibels, measured with the meter placed at a standard distance of 10cm away from the system and the case. The Deepcool CK500 is a good mid-level case and it has a bunch of good features, however, it also has plenty of shortcomings. The design of the case is cool, however, design is subjective and the lack of RGB will be a deal breaker for some, while I find it refreshing to see. The build quality is good with a solid frame and a well-made glass side panel. The Deepcool CK500 shines in the cable management department, with ample space around the case for cable routing and plenty of tie down points around the motherboard tray. Speaking of the motherboard tray, the toolless SSD mounts are well made, however, these rely on bespoke pins that are only made for this case and mounting system. Losing the pins means you lose the access to the SSD mounts. The biggest drawback of the CK500 is the front panel which will restrict the airflow inside the case and increase the temperature for both the CPU and the graphics card. This happens with many cases that opt to have a solid front panel. Fortunately, the panel used on the CK500 is easily removable. The Deepcool CK500 is a good case, but it has some issues that shouldn't exist, like the before mentioned front panel and an SSD mounting system which is good but relies on bespoke pins to work. Even with those, this case is good for its price range, however, if you want airflow and RGB, then this case will not be for you, as the Deepcool CK500 has no RGB and not really the best airflow in the world. If you like this review, then you might consider subscribing for more, and if you want to support me in a direct way, then in the description below you will find the links for both the Patreon and the Star pages of this channel.